Welcome back everyone to the second video tutorial of the zombie FPS game. As discussed in the previous video, today we'll see zombie movement through script, unity nav mesh and animation controllers that control the animation clips. So let's take a look at what we saw in the previous tutorial. So we set up the unity project and downloaded various assets from different places like asset store, custom unity package and from a website called Mixamo and these were the an animations that we downloaded from there so today let's focus on these three things and start our tutorial okay so this is where we left things last time so first of all let's go ahead and unpack this prefab and let's rename it to zombie one okay so we are going to save this and now come to zombie and then you can go to add component and you can write zombie controller and you can go to create and add okay so you can see that we have a script now so first of all let's create a folder for our scripts folder and i'm going to call this scripts and let's move the zombie controller to the scripts by dragging and dropping it okay now let's open the script make sure that you have Visual Studio with IntelliSense for Unity because that just makes things more easier. So I'm going to remove these things. And let's start. So we'll be having variables which should be public and private so the public variables we can directly control from the inspector and the private variables we won't see them in the inspector and we will only make private variables which we don't need to change and all so let's start so first of all we'll as i said we are going to use nav mesh and for that we'll need to use using unity engine dot ai sorry okay so now we'll have to have a target and which should be a transform so transform gives all the positions rotations and everything i'll call this target and i'll just show you what this transform actually is so Uh, let's see here so right now I'm going to put the player as our target and as you can see here is our transform so transform has the transform has the variables for position rotation and scale so we can control all these things from the script okay so now we have our transform target and now we'll have a private variable which should be a nav mesh agent and we'll call this pathfinder okay let's save this up and now what we have to do is we have to build up our nav mesh in unity as that is what the zombie will use to navigate in this area so let's come to our map and actually let me just rename this to environment and then inside the static we have all of the places where our player can walk so i'll just go ahead and select children you can do that by right clicking and we don't want to select the static and after that you can come to window 
and then you can come to AI and then navigation this will open the navigation window for you and you have to take both of these and the navigation area should be walkable and then you should come to bake and just leave all of these things as default and bake them okay so all of the blue area that you can see now is walkable so what you can do is you can just go ahead and select these things the roofs and all that you don't want to be walkable so I'm not going to do that because it won't affect our game in any way right now. So I'll just leave it like this and I'll show you the stairs once. So as you can see that we can walk up the stairs also and rise up to this platform. So this we can control if we want this or not by decreasing the slope to much lower or, dec or increasing the agent height so that it is not possible for him to climb the stairs all of that you can control from here but I think this is okay for our purpose right now so I'll just go ahead with this if you want you can play around with this a little bit and keep baking to understand different things and now that we have baked this so our zombie knows where to walk so let's go back and script it in a way that it follows our player uh, i'll just save this and close this okay so then now what we will do is we will come in the start and we'll write pathfinder equals to get component and then nav mesh agent and in update we'll write pathfinder dot set destination and target dot position okay so now our nav mesh agent will follow the pathfinder and the pathfinder's destination will be target.position so now that we have this setup what we have to do is we have to include the nav mesh component in our zombie so let's come to inspector now and then add component nav mesh agent okay so let's see our zombie over here bring it closer to this and you can see that the height is not quite matching up to it so what we'll do is yeah and the radius is also not matching correctly so we'll just decrease the height to around I'll say 1.6 and the radius to 0 0.35 okay yeah there you go this seems a bit better and then we'll save the scene and let's put the zombie backwards and see if it is following up player so we have given the target and let's see if it follows okay so as you can see that it is following a player but the one thing that you would have noticed is that it is like flying in the air so this is happening because of our road asset so as you can see that this is a whole part so what is happening is that uh, this nav mesh forms based on colliders so it is thinking that this whole plane is a collider so it is not accounting for this step height so what we can do is we can just select all the children 
open up the navigation plane and select the static and we can just take everything a little bit higher and then you can pull it down okay so I think this is fine now yeah so this is perfect now uh, close this up come back to inspector and then zombie and let's bring her up a little bit so let's come back like this yes and let's go to zombie and then we are going to add a component which is animator make sure that it is animator not animation we can close this up for now and this also and then you can see that it doesn't has any controller yet so uh, you can go to window and then animation and then open animation and in here you can go to create so what this does is that it creates an animation clip as well as an animator so both of these are different so the dot anim file is animation clip and i'll just show you the animator also so let's call this zombie attack and let's create this okay so come to project and you'll see that in some folder this is saved so what you should do is create a new folder for your animations and shift them to animations okay there you go and you can just call this zombie so the controller which is for formed automatically takes the name of whatever thing that you are animating from the animation window but also you can create this by right clicking over here going to create and then coming to animation animator controller so in this way also you can form a controller so let me just delete this one and you can see we also have zombie attack but as you know that we have all of the zombie animations over uh, like we have got them so we'll be using those so then you can come to window again and then in animation you can open animator so select the zombie and you can see that there is the animation state that we created so these are called states and you can create them by right clicking create state so we are going to uh, like the empty one is the one like this zombie attack and you can just assign it any motion and in the zombie attack we are not going to use the zombie attack that we formed and that was just for showing what i'll use instead are the ones that we created so it would be zombie attack and this as you can see that this is the entry state so anything attached to it will automatically play as soon as we start the game so if i start the game right now you can see that the attack animation is playing and also because of the zombie following us the zombie is coming towards us so then now instead of this new state you can just go ahead and delete this one and we are going to form a blend tree so right click create state and then from new blend tree so now we have the blend tree now you can double click on the blend tree and this opens 
a second layer you can go back to the base layer from here and you can double click on it and come to the blend tree layer and you can click the blend tree and you can see the inspector so we are going to use a blend type of 1d and we are going to create a parameter so come to get parameters and then we are going to just rename this one and double click on it to rename and we are going to call this velocity and the velocity of a zombie will determine which motion we are going to use or which animation clip we are going to use so click on add motion field click on it again and once again so now you can see that we have three parameters uh, uh, actually we have one parameter and three values of that parameter for different blend trees so you will have to assign the animations press on this select button here and the first one is going to be the idle animation which should be when the velocity is zero and then we are going to have the walk animation which we'll have when the velocity is 0 0.5 and then the motion animation which we'll have uh, then the run animation which we'll have when the velocity is at max so what will happen is that uh, the values would not be these actually so let's go into zombie and open nav mesh agent and we can see that the speed of the zombie is 3.5 so we are going to change the velocity over there and keep it to this one so first let me make this like an even 4 okay and then you can come to the blend tree yeah like this and don't automate the thresholds okay so the maximum which is 4 is going to be run and i'm going to set 3 for a walk so i'll just show you why i'm doing that so let me show you what will happen now so when the velocity is 0 you can see that the highlighted one is armature and idle so this is the animation that will be playing when velocity is zero and as the velocity increases you can see that there is a state between both of these so the animations are actually blending to make the things that we need so let me just save this once and then we are going to control this through our script of what the velocity will be I'll show you that let's come back to base layer and let's make blend tree as the layer default state so as soon as the game starts the blend tree will be a default and the zombie attack we are just going to keep it like this and we'll right click and press on make transition so we'll do it to blend tree and from blend tree we'll make a transition to zombie attack okay so here you go so what we need is a condition so for that we'll come to parameters and create a boolean and this boolean will be is attacking let's save this and in the conditions we can come and say is attacking if is attacking is false then transition to blend tree and if add the condition is attacking and is if attacking is true then go to zombie attack and in the zombie attack we have already given the animation as armature and attack okay so now we need one more animation which is going to be it's created from empty and its name is going to be death and this one is going to be 
the death when animation so we don't need to make any transitions to this as we will just call it directly so now let's go back and let's assign how we change the velocity through script i'm going to save this i'm going to add a private variable called private variable of animator and i'm going to call this anim and in the start we are going to say anim equals to get component animator okay and now over here we are going to set the anim dot set float as the parameter was float if you remember and you can see that we have int id and float value so the id is velocity and the value is going to be pathfinder which is our nav mesh agent dot velocity dot magnitude so one more thing you can see at all times what the magnitude is going to be just copy this and print it in our console okay so as you know that update uh, is run at every frame so we'll see what the magnitude is at every frame so let's come to this go to console and let's play this as you can see the velocity is now zero as our zombie has reached and the idle animation is playing okay this is nice and also you can see that we had the velocity increase increase and increase till 4 and then it gradually slowed down to 0 again so the animation is playing pretty much correctly one more thing that I noticed was that the camera was not capturing the zombie correctly so in here you can come to clipping planes and in the near you can make this as little as possible okay you can save this it is now 0 0.01 fine now you can clear this and you can also remove the print statement so one more thing that we need to set is uh, anim dot set bool this time and we know that the boolean is is attacking and we have to set it true or false so when will we do this so let's just say if vector 3 dot distance so what distance does is it takes two vector 3 parameters and it calculates the difference between those vectors so the first vector is going to be target dot position which is our player and then transform dot position and if this value is smaller than 5f then you can go ahead and set attacking is true else you can say
that attacking is false okay and we are going to do a similar thing with this also so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it over here so what we are going to do is we don't want the zombie to follow a player from anywhere what we want to do is if the distance is smaller than say 15 F only then we need the uh, zombie to follow our player so this is setting velocity parameter for animation and this is following the player and this is attacking the player okay so we have set up this much let's save it and see the results now and before playing what you can do is you can come over here and you can see that the stopping distance right now is zero so what you can do is you can make this around three so what will happen is the zombie will come at a, at a distance and when the vector 3 dot distance like we saw previously when it is 3 the difference is 3 it will stop so let's play and see now there comes a zombie it has stopped at a position of 3 and it has started to play the attack animation now say that we take the player away it has again started to run and when it reaches us it again starts to attack okay so this is done now later on we'll just give some help to our player and as soon as the uh, player is under this distance attacking will start to be true and the health of the player will start to decrease so that we'll see later on for now I think the zombie is complete and one more thing that we can do is is we can give the zombie a nice box collider and you need to de do these things right now because after this we'll start to uh, make copies of the zombie and it would be difficult to put it in all of them separately so we can see that the center is not fixed so i'll just make it 0 0.8 i'm going to do this 1.6 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 okay so 0 0.3 is not enough let's see it like this and let's increase it to see how much is good for us okay so it is somewhere around 0 0.7 that is good so we'll give it 0 0.7 okay now this is done yes okay great in this video we saw the zombie movement with script and we did that using unity navmesh which was an ai and after that we used we saw what were animation controllers and we made animation controller for our zombie so animation controller for this was a bit easier uh, but for the guns it is a little bit more complicated so in the next video in the tutorial 3 We'll see how we make animator controllers for our weapons. 
so these would basically control all of the things that the weapons do including reload and all i'll show you what animation events are in the next video as well so these are the things that we'll see in the next video thank you for watching this video